ספק שסין תהיה לא מעצמה גדולה, אלא המעצמה הגדולה היחידה בעולם. זה נוצר של ספק. וזה יהיה בעוד שמונה, עשר, שתים עשרה, ארבע עשרה, אי אפשר להגיד בדיוק. כי אני שמעתי מפרופסור עברי, מהאוניברסיטה העברית, הוא נמצא עם מת לפני שנה הזאת. הוא הוזמן לפקד, הוא היה שם שנה. כשהוא חזר, מי עוד סטיינתי בסין, אני יודעת שזה גורם עולמי גדול מאוד. הוא אמר, הוא עבר שם שנה אחת איתם, הם לא אישרו לו לנסוע בסין. הם הזמינו אותו רק בבניינים אדם. הוא אמר, הוא לא יכול להאמין שאפשר לעשות התקדמות מדעית כזו בזמן כל כך קצר. ואיש נבון, זה פרופסור ארליק. הוא דיבר בהתלהבות כזו על כישלון, ואיך במשך שנה אחת עשו חיים כזה. ונראה שהוא יודע, גם קראתי הרבה עצים, וגם מה שקראתי, גם כן מעמד את הדברים האלה. אבל איך זה מתקשר? לכן אין ספק שהם יהמצמה היחידה. predicted that China would become the only superpower in the world. At the time, China was very much a developing country. The GDP per capita was 2.5% of the GDP per capita in the US. Common education level was low. China did not have developed natural resources for use, and the local economy was quite secluded from the rest of the world. But then, in 1978, led by Deng Xiaoping, began the Gaichi Kaifeng, literally meaning reform and opening up, also known as socialism with Chinese char characteristics. A program of economic reform that would change the Chinese and the global economy in the following four decades. During the 70s and the early 80s, it mainly focused on opening the Chinese market to foreign investors and enabling farmers to develop their land privately. In the late 80s and 90s, the reforms focused on privatization, lifting price controls, and changing protectionist policies and regulation, creating a strong private sector that accounted for 70% of the GDP by 2005. From 1978 to 2013, an unprecedented growth occurred in China, with the Chinese economy increasing by 9.5% annually. So where is China today? China is the biggest manufacturer in the world, amounting to almost 15% of the entire world production. The GDP of China is 11 trillion US dollars, trading three and a half trillion every year, being the biggest merchandise trader in the world. Beijing is the city with the most billionaires in the world. And all throughout China, there is an increasing urban population who have a significant disposable income that is growing rapidly. But it is not only these incredible statistics that we are seeing. We are seeing today an advanced economy that is leading the world in many aspects. The sharing economy in China is amazing. Today, you can take a bicycle from anywhere you want in Beijing and park it wherever you want based on an incredible software, software which enables you to find the closest bike at any given time. There are apps that enable you to share umbrellas apartments, phone charges, and almost anything else you seem fit. Mobile payment is so common that when my wife leaves the house, she doesn't take a wallet. And trust me, she knows how to purchase. If you come to a store and the shop does not have an option for you to make a mobile payment, it's almost like a shop in Israel not having change. You probably won't even have to pay. Mobile payments in China account for over 10 trillion RMB every single year, with 500 million users. I once had a beggar come to my car with a barcode. 
online purchasing and e-commerce is so advanced that we who live in Beijing rarely leave the house to shop for anything. And we are constantly getting the best prices. The packages will come to our house within two days. This past year, the e-commerce market in China exceeded 750 million US, a billion US dollars. But the real question is, where are we going? Meaning, what will China's role be in the world economy in, say, about 15 years? President Xi announced during the conference in Davos in the beginning of 2017 that China is committed to promoting and leading international trade. Prime Minister Li has declared a similar message when referring to foreign investments in China. Some of the new reforms and regulations are creating the possibility for China to become the most influential economy in the world. On June 28th this year, the party committee published a new foreign investment catalog, opening up many more sectors for foreign investment. Another example is the CFDA, the China FDA, who created a few years ago a fast registration channel. Medical technologies who are exceptionally innovative can go through the registration process quickly. China's trademark office has changed the law in 2014, clarifying that a company that will register a, a trademark, any trademark, in bad faith will not only lose the right to the trademark, but will also be severely punished. On the other hand, lately, we have seen a few restrictions that some people claim can hurt China's efforts to become the leader of the world economy. During 2017, many outbound investments were blocked in order to stop the negative flow of money from China abroad. Though, some of these investments could have brought great technology to China or enabled Chinese companies to broaden their operation scope globally. The new cyber security law, while aiming to protect the privacy and security of Chinese citizens, can also block some excellent international software from entering the Chinese market. The new food certificate law, which demands foreign governments to produce a certificate regarding processed food safety according to Chinese standards, aiming to increase the food security level in China, but at the same time creating an unprecedented demands to other countries to take responsibility according to Chinese standards. Finally, it comes down to the individual. Many individuals in China are more worldly today than ever. Outbound Chinese tourism is booming. Since I've been to China, the tourism to Israel has more than doubled, and this is true for most tourist attractions in the world. Every third or fourth student in the US is Chinese, and we're seeing similar numbers also in the UK. Most Chinese professionals are more and more exposed to what is going on abroad and making a move to make China's economy a development-based economy rather than manufacturing-based. The government is making a tremendous effort to enforce IP laws and create more trust in the market. So where are we heading? Is China becoming the only superpower in the world from an economic perspective, as mentioned by David Ben Gurion? Will the door to China be open enough for China to become this global economic leader? Or perhaps the current slowdown in growth of GDP in the last few years is showing us that this might not actually happen. And China will continue to be just another big and strong player amongst others in the global economy. Many have tried to answer this question, and I will not try to prophesize here today. But I did hear a very good metaphor from a friend while discussing this issue. The Chinese economy is a lot like a boy who grows up and at the end of his street there's a huge apple tree. As a kid, he was too small to climb the tree and pick the apples. But then he grew up and was tall enough to pick many of the apples that were hanging low on the tree. 
He grew up some more, and now it gets harder, but he could still pick a few apples that are higher up. But what he always really wanted were those biggest and most beautiful apples on top of the tree. But to get to those apples, he cannot do it alone. This grown-up man today needs one friend to stand far from the tree and spot the best apples, another friend to hold the ladder, and a third friend to be there on the bottom to catch the apples when the guy on top is throwing them down. The Chinese economy seems to now be at that third stage. All the apples and fruits of the hard work and reforms have been picked on the first level along with the strong leadership and the powerful push of private businesses, the second level apples are currently being picked. But to get to this top level with the juiciest and most luscious apples, China will need to be innovative, to cooperate with other countries to become the leader of the world economy. My name is Chaim Martin. I am the head of the economic mission in Beijing, representative of Israel's Ministry of Economy. We have two teams in Beijing, one in Shanghai, one in Guangzhou, one in Chengdu, and one in Hong Kong. Currently, China is the country with more Israeli economic and trade representatives than any other country in the world. You can see my colleagues and myself each of us have a, a team of local and Israeli staff, all de dedicated to assisting Chinese and Israeli companies to cooperate in order to increase trade between both countries. We assist Chinese companies in scouting the Israeli market for the right companies to invest in or to cooperate with. We assist Israeli companies in understanding the Chinese market and finding customers, distributors, partners, and investors. We enable Israeli companies to understand the, and deal with the local Chinese regulations in every sector. Companies can approach us directly or join our events, delegations, or other activities. We are proud to say that hundreds of companies approach us yearly, and we create connections that lead to hundreds of millions of US dollars in deals every year. We also work closely with the Chinese government in order to create a bilater bilateral platforms which enable increased trade between Israel and China. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.